Shlam alochon bnei tisogil. Ana we nersei David medabrana dzitu dodrana aturetad America. Welcome, friends. I'm the president of the Assyrian Aid Society of America, and we present Assyrian Aid TV. Our guests today are Michael Jacob and Anthony Shabas, who went on their own to visit the homeland. Fascinating experience. Michael, tell us, how did this even come about? Well, Tony and I, we were both born here in the United States. Our fathers moved here from Baghdad in, in, the, in the 60s. And, and for a long time, we've been wanting to go back. But with the current political situation, with the occupation and all that, it's been very difficult to find an opportunity to get back. But just this past year, um, our uncle Sargon, he had gone to the Khab Nisan festival in Dohuk. And he had wonderful things to say about it. He suggested that we go. So that's, that's what brought about. And so you were there at Khab Nisan? Um, we didn't make it for the first day because of school commitments. But we were there. We arrived two days afterwards. And we, we caught a lot of the after parties. And we connected with a lot of youth groups that were involved with the Now, you were both students here. Yes, sir. Uh, college students. And uh, I'm, I'm intrigued at the, at the draw that, that got you there. Uh, Anthony, give us a little bit of your personal feel, your personal experience. Well, as far as a personal experience, you know, we really didn't know what really to expect, you know. Uh, besides what our uncle Sargon Shabbos had told us about his experiences, that's what really put the seal on the deal uh, that we were definitely going to head out there and experience the homeland firsthand. You know? what, and what's your first memory that comes to mind? What, what was, the, what was the, the final feel that you came home with? You know, you know, to even explain the experiences that we had, it's just the words that are going to come out of my mouth, I don't even think can even grasp, get, grasp the, what we experienced, you know. But coming back here and actually meeting all the people there, I mean, it was one of the best experiences of my life. Right. Give us a little bit of that emotion that uh, you felt. Meeting the youth group there and just, you know, Michael and I, not knowing Assyrian as well as others, you know, we understand a little bit, you know, but going there, it's an insecure feeling of feeling that we were not going to be accepted, but it was actually the total opposite. Everyone there was even more happy that we didn't know Assyrian and we were even trying to learn and coming there and actually, you know, experiencing our homeland and visiting everybody, not knowing Assyrian and barely understanding Arabic, you know. Uh, they were very impressed. And, but you were you know, accepted and... Very much so, very much so, and, and it was within a matter of hours I felt like I had lived there my whole life. And um, Michael, a little bit about some of your personal experiences. What are a couple of highlights of things that specifically happened? Uh, um, for me, one of the highlights was, was the experience we had on Easter. We all, like, there was a youth group of about you know, between 20 to 40 people, depending on what day it was. Um, but we, all, we would all go to um, one of the youth's house, and we would be greeted with, with the painted eggs, candy, coffee, all that, over and over again. And then that group would then go to the next house. Same thing, eggs and coffee and candy and all that. And then next, we wound up going to about 15 houses and... All on Easter Day? All, all, all just on Easter. And you gained 20 pounds on this trip, I presume. <laughs> <laughs> and Tony had about nine eggs, was it? Yeah, it definitely yeah. did. It's hard to turn them down. Now, was there any particular program that you were tied into, or was this totally on your own? Uh, you, you planned an itinerary and took off? I mean, how did that work? You know, we really didn't have any, you know, a plan exactly. You know, we were going to go out there and hook up with the youth group there and then just see as much as we could see, you know. Like, it was a short term. Like, we kind of decided to go uh, shortly before we actually left. It was like a short term thing. Like, three weeks before we decided to go, we went. And how long were you there? Uh, we were there for ten, 11 days. How soon are you ready to go back? Um, if you're ready to... Get a plane ticket, I'm ready to go right now. I'll tell you, I wish I could get up and go with you. It's been five or six years since I was there. And, and, I, and I understand your comment about the, that intense feeling, the emotion uh, to, to be with people that are just constantly speaking Assyrian. And everywhere you go, the food is Assyrian, and the people are Assyrian, and the language is Assyrian, the print is Assyrian, the books are in Assyrian, uh, is, is really, re really remarkable. Yeah. One, of the most, one of the most powerful things for me was to take kind of the abstract idea of our heritage and actually connect that to real people and to feel the land, to feel the sunshine in the homeland and to breathe the air and to, to, to hike on the mountains that our people have walked on for thousands of years.
It's an emotional feeling. When I went, uh, we crossed the uh, Tigris River uh, and landed in, uh, in the north from Syria into uh, Iraq. And I started splashing my hand in the water. This is the Tigris River water. Uh, any kind of surprises, anything that you really didn't expect or, or that, uh, that you're anxious to go back and review because you didn't have enough time to do it? So there's a lot that we didn't have a chance to do. I mean, there's, there's so much to see, there's so much history. I mean, every town that we went to, we were, like, we were welcomed by, by many people, by different families in similar but unique ways. And each, each town we went to is, has its own history, its own, its own landscape. And one, one town in particular, Tony had a very, a very nice experience reconnecting with some family. Yeah, actually, uh, we stopped in at Aden, where my mother has a few cousins and an uncle, and we stopped there and uh, visited them, and that was a very, very nice experience for me, you know. Uh, I really can't explain. It's just a very emotional moment, and I was very happy to share that with Michael and the people that we were with. Now, what about Assyrian Aid? Did you have any, any contact with the work that, that the Assyrian Aid Society is doing in Iraq? Yes, definitely. We were uh, in direct contact with Rabbi Napoleon, uh, president of Assyrian Aid Society Iraq, and uh, we went to a, a few of the schools and checked out um, the work that they're doing there. And um, it was amazing. It was amazing going to a school and actually seeing all the curriculum, you know, in Assyrian and, you know, all the students speaking Assyrian. It was just, it was amazing. It was amazing. I really have to add to that my own experience. Uh, if, uh, if you were to ask the Assyrians about this Narsi David who came to visit, I'm sure they would say, oh, Awanile or Bachiana. I was crying. I mean, to sit there in a classroom and watch the kids studying uh, chemistry, uh, totally in Assyrian. The entire textbook is in Assyrian. You know, the Assyrian Aid Society uh, paid for the translation of those textbooks from Arabic into Assyrian. And the students are able to go through their entire education from the first grade through high school totally in Assyrian. We're very, very proud of that.